the non statics like uh, we when we do calculate the radius of a hydrogen atom or the electron in the first orbit in and how much radius it is going then we use the coulombic potential the coulombic potential is based on the coulombic force so the coulombic force and the centripetal force we compare and from that we derive the radius of hydrogen atom and that radius comes out to be 0 0.52 0 0.529 angstrom that radius comes out to be and when Bohr calculated this one then miraculously this thing is very accurate although the calculations are not good for the other orbits but for the principal orbit which we call the s orbit which we call the completely spherical orbit the calculations are very right then the question comes in mind that is we were considering this thing for the static charges the coulomb law was for static charges then why it is giving us a good result for the moving charges when we consider when we consider the electron which is going around the let's say let, let's say this is a proton and the electron is just going around it this is completely spherical orbit the s orbit and this is the electron which is here now this electron is going around it it's a moving charge although there is some oscillations in this one we neglect that one but this one is a moving charge then why we are applying this thing to the and applying this one first and then why it is giving the very accurate result so the very first thing i told you in the beginning that the source charge is supposed to be stationary while the test charge like here this one to be stationary this one may or may not be stationary so one reason is this one that due to these reasons it is giving us the right result but there is another insightful thing in this one that if we look uh, from the point of view of proton then what the proton is seeing how the protons comes to know that how the protons come to know that electron is going around me and that we know that there is a field which is the electromagnetic field and the particles the virtual photons which are exchanged between them are actually the particles which are exchanged uh, the mutual particles exchanged between them which we call the virtual photons they are constantly exchanged we call them virtual due to the reason that it is not like that this proton is emitting this uh, photon and it is reaching here and it is receiving it and after receiving it then releases it again and it reaches the proton it is not like this these are virtual these are called the mediating particles now we know that the speed of electron in this orbit the speed of electron in this orbit is very very less than c while these photons these mediating particles are being exchanged at equal to c at speed of light so what the proton sees when we know when this flashing between the two is more quick than the movement of this one then the proton will never see this electron in motion but the proton will always the proton will always 
see this thing only changing its position and it is not moving at all and as the distance is constant so that's why it gives us the right result this is like for example uh, let's say that this chart is uh, falling from this bow this position to the bottom and this motion that we are observing let's say it's a dark room and we are having a flashlight we are having a flash so that we are switching it off and on if the flashing will be faster than the speed with which it is going down then we will never see this chalk in motion but we will only see that it is just changing position and uh, might be you know that in some of the FSC books there is a stroboscopic image so stroboscopic image is taking the image uh, very quickly so this will this will not the proton will never see the electron in motion and that's the reason that the result that we obtained is uh, right the result that we obtained is right for spherical orbit only